Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for November 18th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Emily, how are you? Good, how are you? Great. If uh, you wouldn't mind, uh, doing the roll call, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Shamey. Here. Ms. Hopkins. Here. Ms. Eggleston. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Seven members present. Thank you, ma'am. And tonight's invocation is by Mr. Cook. Please bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we come again before you in order to do the business for the city of New Carlisle. Please grant us the wisdom to do the right things at this time. Please also grant the best that you can for our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our EMTs, our fire department. Thank you. Sure. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, we'll need action on the uh, work, sketch, work session for 11 4 19. So moved. Uh, Mr. Shammy and Amy? Oh, Peggy. Peggy. Okay. Council, any discussion? When you're ready? Good. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. And it's accepted, 7-0. Thank you very much. And then again for the uh, regular meeting on 11-4-19. So, second. Ms. Hopkins? Hopkins, Shammy? Yes, ma'am. Any discussion, council? And when you're ready, ma'am. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. We'll track down communications. None tonight. Mr. Bridge and his wonderful city manager report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of council, members of public would like to share with you the city manager report. <clears throat> we'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. Good evening, council and members of the public. For October, our total revenue for the general fund was $23,381.58. Our October total expenses for the general fund was $82,179.63. This month, I put something a little bit different on your report. Uh, we do have the income tax that comes in um, every month, and I wanted to show you that what went into our withholding account. It goes into another account, so it doesn't come up and show you in your general fund. So the ratio of our expenses to our revenue looks a little off, but I didn't want you to uh, think that was the case. So we did receive in the month of October from, from our income tax, $146,614.04. So I just wanted you to be aware that that's the total amount received. Um, the 1% goes to the general fund and then 0.5% goes to the police fund. But I, I wanted to show that so you do see that there is other revenue coming in that we're not overspending from what our revenue's coming in. Okay. Um, our year-to-date total revenue collected is uh, 5246601 Our year-to-date total expenses is $4,525,455.71. <clears throat> if anyone has any questions about anything else I put in the report. Council, any questions for Ms. Watson? Doesn't look like it. Thank you very much. We appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watson. Moving on with the city manager reports, our service discussion. Uh, Mr. Kitko, uh, I excuse for tonight because he uh, stepped in and did uh, acting clerk of council uh, at one of the previous meetings. So I will be giving out his uh, report. Uh, council and anyone with a packet, you'll notice that uh, his says at meeting uh, ele electronic files issues. Um, we could not get the attachment to open while I was doing the packet, so that's why it's dispersed here today. Uh, under service this department, uh, he has completed some minor road repairs in areas that need more in-depth repair, such as ruts created from trash truck operations, storm drains on Main Street, 
Uh, some of them have orange cones on them, getting estimates to replace with new structures. He is also getting a cost and time estimate for city crew to perform that project. Leaf pickup season has begun. The information at the city building and it is also available at the city website. That is www.newcarlisle.net. Um, Tecumseh Trail Overgrowth Boom Arm Mowing is complete. Clark County Engineer's Office finished the uh, uh, product. Sorry, I'm reading this. Project. Project, he has a misprint. Project, and it exceeded the city's ex, uh, expectations. 2019 wastewater plant and fluid building upgrade. Uh, Peterson Construction was awarded the contract. New pump is to be delivered early November and bar screen early December. Uh, equipment will be installed in mid-December. Startup is tentatively scheduled for 12-18 or 12-19. 2019-2020 uh, primary number one clarifier project. Demolition and installation on the new clarifier in, exist, uh, in existing concrete structure. Uh, city manager has, app uh, has approved to proceed with the project, uh, currently finalizing the payment of the project. Uh, 20, uh, the traffic signal upgrade project. <laughs> Excuse me, project was awarded to Banzell Construction Company. Construction is to be completed by 831 2020. As Mr. Kiko gets updates, he will pass those along. And just if, uh, anyone who doesn't know what the traffic signal upgrade project is, uh, we did uh, a couple years ago receive 100% federal funding to replace the traffic signals at 571 and 235 and also uh, Main Street there in Church, uh, Main Street and Lake by Speedway with the new uh, traffic signals that are just one arm and one across, the new modern ones looking and the street lines, uh, street names will be lit up as well. So we're very excited that come to 100% in federal funds. That is all Mr. Kiko had for his service report. Uh, so uh, I can entertain any questions. Count Mr. Cobb. Mr. Bruce, can mm -hmm. I ask a question, please? Sure. Why do we outsource for the manhole and catch basins? Sometimes the project is cheaper to do when it's outsourced. But we had this discussion um, probably about two months ago, and I had instructed council, well, probably Mr. Cook and Mr. Cobb, that I have instructed Howie to look at a price comparison to do those in-house. So I have a comparison to in-house and a comparison to out-house, out, out contracted out. But actually, we're paying these people that should be able to do that. Well, I understand that, but uh, sometimes it's more of a benefit to contract it out because you get more bang for your buck opposed to doing it in-house. That's what we're looking at now to decide how we're going to move forward with that project. <clears throat> Good, Mr. Cobb? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions? I just had one. Can you, mm -hmm. I don't want to sound rude when I ask this, but how long does it take him to get the, uh, the estimates on the repairs on those? They've had cones in them for quite a long time. I was just curious if there's, if maybe at the next time he's at a meeting, if he could just maybe give us an update on maybe a timeline of when he might have like a final uh, estimate or. or Any, anytime you kind of scope out this kind of in-house versus out-house, it's, it's a very complicated process. Right. Um, but I'll definitely get with him about the timing on that, and we'll have some for you next week. I mean, if, I mean I'm mean, i sure he's not being lazy on it. I was just, I mean, if he could maybe give us a timeline of the sure. project and, and when it may, you know, if it's yep. something that'll get kicked over to next year yep. because of the weather or whatever it may be. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, looks like that's it for Mr. Kitko. Okay. And we'll move on to city manager's report under a fire report with fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, and citizens. In the month of October, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 93 EMS calls in the city, 12 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, call volume at this time stands at 1,075 calls for the year. We had uh, four EMS calls answered either by, or mutually by Pike Township or Bethel Clark Township due to Medic 52 being on response. We uh, answered two mutual aid runs to Pike Township and two mutual aid runs to uh, Bethel Park. In the month of October, the division responded to one overdose call. Uh, just as a heads up, uh, the city DMV office is closed. <coughs> it will be closed tomorrow uh, due to a major gas leak inside the structure. This, do you have any idea on the timeline of when that, no? Mm -hmm. No, I just left the scene about half hour ago. Okay. But it was, you know, Anything what? attached to that building, um, business-wise, the auto uh, repair and all that, all of them were shut down. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chief. Any questions for Chief? Council? 
Mr. Vice Mayor. The uh, gas leak, uh, <clears throat> up there, Chief, is that uh, reopening pending the department satisfaction? So we'll have to have a repair. Down. First, we'll have to find the leak because the leak was not, a uh, veteran could not find it. Oh, wow. It's possibly in the wall. Uh, they'll have to find the leak, then re repair the leak, and then they'll have to call Vectorin to come out, and Vectorin will do a pressure check and a, a leak test to give the okay for it to be turned back on, and they'll notify us. And, and one other question, uh, Chief. I noticed that at the, most of the council meetings, you give us a total of how many runs <coughs> the department has done. Could that be incorporated in on this uh, report for us, or I, it's, it's hard for me to do to do that when I do the report because I may do the report a week a week ago and send it to Mr. Bridge. So I always handwrite it and then give it at that night. Well, it don't have to be exact. <laughs> well, I like to be exact, <laughs> or just add an extra ten. Mm -hmm. And what can can you can you tell us what type of fires they've been? Are they chimney fires or just furnace fires? Um, Turnip fires or we had a dryer. Um, this past weekend, we had a dryer that uh, the 220 line shorted out. We had that. And fire-related calls can be anything from a gas leak, a CO2 detector going off, a smoke detector going off, um, auto accident sometimes is related to the fire-related call because fire apparatus respond to it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have one more, Chief, since you said something that sparked something with me. Um, can you, since we're getting into the season, everybody's kicking their furnaces on, can you go over a little bit of just information on, um, I mean, I think everybody's pretty familiar with smoke detectors, but more so carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide detectors are just as important as smoke detectors. Uh, any home that has any type of gas appliance, furnace, uh, hot water heater, uh, dryer, uh, stove, anything that runs off of gas, uh, it should have a at least one uh, CO detector on each floor of the home, uh, make sure they work. A lot of them plug in to the wall, but they also have a battery backup in case you lose power. Uh, but they should be checked just like when you check your uh, smoke detector. Change the battery when we fall back, time-wise fall back, spring forward. Uh, that's the perfect time to change the batteries in those also. Uh, some some uh, companies sell at the combination smoke and CO detector, which personally I don't I don't like because CO doesn't go up, it goes down. Um, it hugs the ground. Um, so it's better to have one and have it right about knee high in the home and have it as close as you can to whatever, like to your furnace room. So would, would it be bad to have it in the furnace room? You can, uh, I mean, it, it's with it having it outside. If you have more than, if you only have a furnace that's running off gas, if that's your only gas appliance, then you have put, because usually if you have the furnace, that's where the hot water heater is also. Right. Um, and you'll get, you'll get both. Um, but just like anything else, it's better to have you know, at least one on each floor of the home. Um, and every year, it's a really good idea to have your fire or your furnaces inspected by a professional. And also, if you have a chimney that you're burning wood in or a gas fireplace, to have the flu check, make sure there's not bird's nest or anything in it. Have a licensed chimney sweep, take care of it, um, and have it inspected and have the flu inspected. Great. Thank you very much, Chief. Any questions for Chief before we move on? Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on with the City Manager Report, or a police uh, report with uh, Deputy Major Cat. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members, members of the public. Uh, Sergeant uh, Underwood uh, prepared this for us today, and I wanted to, I passed it out at the beginning. Uh, we want to talk about uh, some of the calls on here that you see the assaults, uh, the domestic violence. We had eight calls. Uh, theft calls are three. Uh, we had two non entry crashes. Uh, three citations were issued out in the month of October. Uh, we had two overdoses and we had one suicide attempt. One of the things that I didn't see on here that I would uh, like to talk to Sergeant Underwood about maybe uh, putting on here is the actual number of traffic stops that we make in the city and also the actual number of verbal warnings and written warnings that we also issue in the city because we do quite a bit of that but they're not noted on here uh, for you to be able to see that um we did have some vandalism that was going on and uh sergeant underwood is happy to announce that <clears throat> we do have a suspect in that and that there should be arrest made uh within this week of uh, that individual that's been going around and spray peyton nico on different things uh throughout the city here uh 
He says in October that we had a uh, more than our share of drinking and driving arrests by multiple agencies in New Carlisle. And he just wanted me to explain that uh, it's a very expensive when you get caught drinking and driving. It can be up to $10,000, not to mention the fact of everybody's lives that you're putting in jeopardy by doing that. So he wanted to extend the message of anybody that feels like they need to do that, just not to do that, just get somebody to drive for you, call somebody a taxi or something. Uh, I want to make sure that anybody that sees anything, please, no matter how small it is, give us a call. Um, we have a good response time here, uh, and usually we can be there rather, rather quickly. I mean, I was tied up tonight for a little while, you know, with the uh, with the uh, fire leak. So, but if an emergency would have come out, we got other eight other deputies that would respond to that, and I could break away if I had to. And if you see anything like that, just call us at three two eight twenty five sixty. And uh, that would conclude uh, Sergeant Underwood's uh, report for the police department. Council, any questions for the deputy? I had one. It's going to be kind of geared, I, I would assume, towards Mr. Bridge more. And this is a huge question. So I know you probably won't be able to give me an answer, um, you know, once we break down our budget. What's it, what will it take for us to, to look into getting a... Um, that just the word just totally slipped my mind. The police administrator here that stays here in New Carlisle that watches over our deputies and also does their scheduling and, and whatnot here. I mean, is that? Uh, I would have to get with the sheriff's office because it's uh, in the contract. It's worded mutually agreed upon. Um, but I actually already looked into this, looked at our codes, and it says that we have the right to hire someone. So that would uh, simply be, I guess, the administrative decision to move okay. forward with that. Um, I would like to see that money be used it was, it were a maybe fifth deputy and then see how that goes and see if there's any more left over for a police a, a dedicated police administrator right yeah okay thank you very much mm -hmm. all right um no other questions all right back to you sir awesome thank you uh and moving on with the city manager report under informational items we have a new building update uh, abatement removal costs proposal i did attach it again just the front page of that proposal not to uh, uh other two pages uh, but uh, it is going to be $4,883 to remove that as asbestos. No clearance air samples will be required. So that's going to save um, $750 for each floor. So we'll, we'll, and, it, and it's also non prevailing wage. So that is total price will be around $4,800. Excuse me. And again, they are removing 700 square feet of asbestos on the second floor and 120 square feet on the first floor. Technology updates for the new building. Uh, the bridge group is acting as our consultants for the city on the project for technology uh, reasons. The same company that fills our uh, uh, council meetings. We have a representative right in the back now. Uh, and currently uh, is under contract being the city's IT department. Uh, we have a fantastic working relationship. It's a fantastic company to work with. Uh, so quote for a wiring the building, that is the phone system, computer cables, security cables, anything that requires any kind of wire to it for power or data transmission would be 13680 and again, we wanted to keep this off of the bid stuff because if that was part of the bid package, we'd be paying a little bit more on top of that. Um, we may need to consider that as a capital expense. If so, we will have to add, add it to the 2020-24 CIP. Uh, speaking of the CIP, the next bullet point, 2020-24 capital improvement plan uh, timeline. It is the same thing that was on last uh, uh, meeting, just slightly modified for the uh, dates that have already passed. So there is a resolution to intro the CIP tonight. Under normal, normal circumstances, we do introduce the C, uh, resolution and vote on it and the same night. That is not the case. We do have to give our public chance to inspect that CIP document. So a legal uh, ad um, with that will be in the Springfield News Sun on Wednesday. It's the 21st. Yes. No, 20th. And uh, basically what that CIP is going, uh, legal ad is going to say that it's been introduced to council. Um, and then the public will have a chance to inspect it for the next uh, couple weeks till it's voted on again. Uh, 12 December 2nd, council will vote on the CIP. And again, the 2020 operating budget adoption will be uh, either March 9th or March 23rd. And we are uh, prefer and aiming for that March 9th de uh, date. Park and Recreation Board, there is an application attached for Tanya Moeller. I'm not sure how council needs to proceed with that. Um, I don't know if that's something you guys want to set up an interview with her for or just motion to approve uh, her now. Uh, but I'll let council to discuss that. Council, any comments or feedback on how to proceed? Or what the, you would uh, like to do? Mr. Mr. Yes, sir. Was that the only application we received from us 
local citizen. From a local citizen, yes. I thought you were uh, her application indicated she <clears throat> worked for Miami County uh, Parks and Rec for the last uh, 14 years. She wouldn't be on the council. And I guess the only question I would have is uh, they never interviewed me. What did you do there? <laughs> you can give us the short version if you like. She's not here. Oh, I thought that was her sitting there. Okay, well, then I guess we will have to interview her at some point. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me? She taught classes. Oh, did you? Okay. So, Council, any other? Mr. Cook, Mr. Cobb, any feedback on how you would like to? I, I have worked with Tanya on several committees, and I've found her to be very astute, uh, very knowledgeable about what subjects we are going to do on those committees. And I found, well, worked with both her and her husband on several committees, and I found her to be a very workable person. Okay. So she'd be a good fit, do you think? Yes, I think she would be a good fit, matter of fact. Uh, the, uh, yeah, she's currently working with Miami County Park District for 14 years, I mean. Yeah. What more can we ask for? Yeah. And I'm wondering, if she taught classes, is she a full-time person, or did she come in to teach classes? I was just curious on what she did. Would you, uh, would you want to approve it tonight, or would you rather meet her in person before you? I have no problem approving it tonight. Okay. Yeah. I, I think with, uh, since we only have the one application, if council desires, uh, I'll make the motion to, uh, to accept her to the board. Second. Who was that first? Mr. Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Cook. <clears throat> Mr. Shammy, did you have anything to add, sir? Oh, no. no thank you. You sure? I, I appreciate it. No thank problem, you. buddy. He looked like he wanted to say something. Or, or, you know, the... All right. Any other comments before we call the vote? All right. When you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. All right. Congratulations to her. So, Mr. Mayor, can I ask one thing? You sure can. Um, we received one uh, application from somebody that doesn't even live in the city. So, we, one of the requirements, they need to live in the city, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that's what I thought, and uh, Peggy agreed with it, but I was just curious because I thought it was strange. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Bridge had sent out an email on that. The rooms, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, you were correct, though. All right, Mr. Bridge, back to you, sir. Thank you, and thank you for the fantastic segue, uh, because there are sections. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a, de a deeper look at some of our policies we have on for our, for our planning board, our board of zoning appeals, uh, because um, what I saw in my early research is it doesn't explicitly prohibit someone who's not a city resident to be on the board. Now, does it mean that there's no Ohio Revised Code that would supersede that and say, yes, you have to be? Uh, but I do want to do uh, a look at some of our particular boards and see if it's in there. If not, we can just add it in there. Um, this particular board, Parks and Rec Board, the bylaws were amended by council in 2019 and approved. When we do our codification update online, we do that a year back. So in early 2020, I'll send the company over the legislation for 2019, and they go online and update it. The, when the Parks and Rec Board uh, policies were passed, it, in the Parks and Rec Board, it says you have to be a member of the city. But it wasn't publicly known because it hasn't been codified yet, updated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. All right. Moving on with the city manager report. Auditor exit conference that is scheduled for uh, Tuesday, November 19th. That is tomorrow. And we will review findings of the 2018 state audit. That meeting is, is made public after auditor final approval. So uh, the auditors, the council, and myself and Debbie tomorrow will go through those findings. The auditor has to dip, still give a final approval. Once that final approval is granted, then they send it out to make it a public document. 
Upcoming health insurance renewal with inspect, expected increase in premium cost. Uh, right now, I am in, I'm, assume, I'm, I'm going to be expecting a about 26.1% increase on our health insurance. Um, I have a meeting set with them on Thursday, um, but that is the last quote we got, and UHC did uh, come back, back with a number, but it wasn't much better than the MMO number. So again, I have a meeting with our medical insurance rep on Thursday, and I will update council um, on probably Thursday or Friday with what we find out. Uh, codify the city's fixed asset policy. Uh, in years past, we've kind of got dinged on this in our um, audit. Um, so I did a little research, and the fixed asset policy that we do have is, has never been codified. And when you go right now, it's just a little blurb that says, please refer to this thing that's on file with the clerk. Um, unfortunately, it makes it impossible to find. So I actually found an old copy of it. Uh, and it's old, you can tell the font on the paper. So I'm actually gonna be uh, resubmitting that to council so we can actually make it part of our codified ordinances. So it's numbered, so when we go online, we see it right there. So that's upcoming. Um, we also have information on the new playground equipment that I got with the grant money this year. Um, so we're excited about that. That will be uh, released here very soon. And also with the city manager report, kind of not normal, uh, but I attached an upcoming ordinance. It's ordinance 1943E. And that is um, what we have to do to change our local gun laws to comply with House Bill 228. It is a state mandated change. Um, we have to do it. However, how we normally do our emergency ordinances is I would give the pack, pack, pack it out on a Friday, sometimes a Saturday, and then they immediately go and vote on, on those Mondays. Given the complexity of this, I wanted council and the public to see it before they vote on it after it being out there for only a couple days. So council does have a copy of that ordinance attached. And it is, it, it's, a, it's a brutal one. I am trying to find uh, a, just a general thing that makes understanding House Bill 228 a little bit more easier to process. Um, and then if I find anything, I'll, I'll send it on the council. But I just want council and the public just to take a look at this because it does heavily amend um, your laws when it comes to the city. One of the things that stuck out to me is the hunting, hunting within the city limits would now be okay from what I read from it. Oh, wow. Uh, it is repealed under this. Again, the city of Columbus is Wait, currently suing the state of Ohio because what it does, for, if you read the actual front page of this legislation piece, the city of Columbus is suing the state of Ohio because it takes away from their charter municipality home rule rulemaking authority. So the state is pretty much coming and saying this is what you have to do. Um, so again, that's up for council review, public council. And that is all I have for my city manager report. Awesome. Great job as always, sir. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions for <coughs> Mr. Bridge and his city manager report before we move on? <coughs> all right. Thank you, sir. And we'll move on to comments from the members of the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address. Linda Eggleston, Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. Um, I wanted to report on the community garden. Um, this year, when we uh, took over Westlake, uh, one of the advantages of Westlake is that it has a well. And uh, we have secured solar panels to operate that well so that we don't need to attach into electricity. And we purchased three 275 gallon carboys to act as a reservoir for that water so it's not just pumping straight to the garden. Um, we haven't had installation of those solar panels yet and the Carboys were stacked on the property. Those have been uh, fooled around with and used as what appears to be a barricade to be able to uh, get sleeping area for homeless people there and um, break the wind. The I don't have a huge problem with that. I do have a huge problem with the fact that there are feces all over the ground out there. So we need to uh, 
ask that the city patrol that and keep an eye out in terms of people back there. It creates a health hazard, obviously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Ms. Agenston, the is there any way that could be posted uh, like during after daylight hours and you can't be in there? Can, is that possible to be done? And that would give maybe law enforcement <coughs> more bite to to <coughs> people from that? I can get a sign up like that. You know. I mean, if you put no trespassing, then that would also apply during the daytime. Right, and I don't want that. Yeah, exactly. people in there playing and doing whatever they want to do. Right. I don't want that mess. I mean, I don't, if they want to go in there and sleep, I don't even have a problem with that. If they don't make a mess of happen, I don't want to have to go over there and clean that up. I mean, it was just an idea. But I don't know if, it, uh, if, if the sign would be any good there or not to keep people out at night. Do you but, but it would give, I think, the PD a little more bite if there was something there. Mm -hmm. Do you lock that gate off so people can't drive through, or is that still open? So that the cops will drive down through that and put their spotlight yeah. in the back there. Okay. Thank you. And they can feel free to drive on the grass if they want. I don't know if they will now that they know there's people sleeping back there, but you know, well, they have super super yeah. Yeah, they can do that. I'm more worried about, the, oh, you got it. <laughs> well, I, I do it quite easily without any folding drives, so. <laughs> Wait till you get two foot of snow. All right. You can still get back there. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? All righty. Thank you very much. Uh, Committee reports on the night. Resolutions. Ms. Berner. Resolution 19-19R, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-2-19, a resolution adopting a capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Move on to ordinances. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. When you're ready. Ordinance 19-40, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-2-19, and ordinance adopting and implementing a uniform policy for projects funded in whole or in part by federal funding. Ordinance 19-41, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-2-19, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Miami Valley Lighting LLC for street lighting services for use on public grounds and streets in the city of New Carlisle. And ordinance 19-42, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 12-2-19. An ordinance employing a director of law and authorizing the city manager to sign a contract to hire. <coughs> Move on to other business? Yes, please. Can I have 20 seconds? You can have 25 up? even. Thank you. Um, any, uh, and I don't, I don't know if this is even allowed. I don't know the rules when it comes to legislation and all this stuff like some council members do. Would it be possible to uh, have council break rules of council to make ordinance 1942, ordinance 1942E, so we can go ahead and vote on that tonight? So move. Second. Are you allowed to do, I don't, I, I'm no. just asking. I don't, I don't even know if it's. I don't see why not. I think, mm -hmm. I think with the rules of council broken, then we can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second was Mr. Shammy. All right. Don't know. Yes, it was yeah. Mr. Shammy. All right, so we are voting on breaking rules of council. Correct. Okay. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston. <coughs> Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Uh, yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, six to one. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Vice Mayor? Move to accept ordinance 1942E. Second. Second. Mr. Shammy? Shammy, okay. 
Um, Mr. Bridge, would you like to go over this again? Uh, yeah, explanation to this ordinance is um, <coughs> say we'll have a new law director uh, if it passes tonight, uh, effective midday tomorrow. Oh, sorry, Council. Any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge? <laughs> Did you follow this? I just. <laughs> I appears to be no questions. Okay. And when you're ready, ma'am. Um, Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Um, yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted, six to one. All right. All right, now moving on to other business. Other business. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. The city offices will be closed Thursday, November 28th, and Friday, November 29th, 2019, for Thanksgiving. All right, executive sessions done tonight. And uh, council, anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah. Audience, anything before we go? You, we could do a yeah, group song would be nice. We do do karaoke every night. Yeah, okay. All right. And uh, good, Second.